Now, the first thing first, are you unique? How unique are you? Most of the time, when we go for interview, or most of the time when we are asked a question, tell me three to five things about yourself. And a lot of people will be taking 30 seconds to think about it. Isn't that funny that you know yourself for so long and it is hard for you to articulate five to seven things about you? But that is just one part of the equation, right? What about the other part? If you are unique, but you're not visible, you know what you become? The world's best kept secret. Because you are awesome, but nobody knows about it, right? So it's like you have a great product, but your marketing fail you. So what do we need to do? The form is what a lot of people see. So it can be your CV, it can be your accomplishment, your KPI, your resume, your portfolio. A lot of form, right? People can see who you are. But the problem is they don't know the X factor. They don't know the secret source of how you accomplish all this. Are you an enjoyable person to work with? Right? Now, if you, if you work for Steve Jobs, I believe a lot of us go crazy because the way that he drives people, right? So, it's always a substance, the substance deep inside that matters. But substance is something that people have to discover. People have to spend time with you. But most importantly, we need to know our substance. So today, it's this next 40 minutes, it's really about self-discovery so that you understand why you do what you do and why is it that sometimes when you meet people, strangers, within five minutes, you discover you and that stranger have something in common that you both don't like each other. <laughs> right? Yeah. Why? So, why? so what makes us different? If we don't do our branding properly, will be like a Titanic story. So, I want all of us to understand our own personality. Now, that I'm not a psychologist. There are a lot of debate about personality. But to me, it's really a sum total of your attitude, belief, actions, and motivations. So, it defines how we create our own world. Let's face it, your world, and my world are different, right? Your world, how you see the world is different from me, right? To you, you must, maybe you are someone who are systematic. But I am a spontaneous person. Now, we have a problem. When we meet our world clash, right? You may be focusing on doing things right. But I like to do things fun. So most of the time, it depends on who is the boss, right? Right? Who's the customer? Oh, then you're right. Let's do it your way. Never mind about me. Right? Do it your way. But the problem is this. It also tells us how we adjust to our environment. Have you ever heard someone or your friend say, you know something? I wasn't like this before. But ever since I joined this company, I turned into this creature. Right? Right? Because most of my friends are intellectual. So I become more intellectual, I slow down. Okay, so I want to get into this. Okay, this is a test. This is something that I like you. Now, I don't have any words. My tests are very simple. I want you guys to focus on something. Now, everybody focus on the first column. You know what's column, right? Column is this way, yeah? This way. So the first column, two, three, and four. I want you guys to look at two, three, and four. Don't think too much. Don't feel too long. <laughs> Just pick a number that you resonate. Now, please do not choose two because you like tracking. Okay? There is a certain energy in that picture. So, I suggest you take your mobile and take a picture of this slide because after that, you forget. All right? Take a picture of this first. So they can refer to it later. Now, two, three, four, pick one. You got it in your heart? If you can't remember, write it down. Okay, two, three, four, you pick one. Okay, done? Five, six, seven. Pick another. 
Done? Eight, nine, and one. Take one more. Done? Good. Now I want you to mentally rearrange the three numbers that you have into order of importance. If you find that, for example, you choose three, six, and nine, but you feel that actually six is more like me, I resonate with that more, and then followed by nine, and then three, can you rearrange that three number? Done? You got a three number? Okay, very good. I, I want to decode all this nine number. I'm going to tell you roughly who you are. But you want a detailed one. At the end of it, there's a QR code where you scan. You can put in your three number and I will send you a detailed one-pager report on what is that three number for. Okay, so there are names of all this. So anybody has number one, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you about order. Anybody has this card, there is number one card in your selection. Anybody? Okay, if you have this card, your personal brand is to do things right. You want it always to be the, the one who is most systematic, the one that is most disciplined. And you, if you're a leader, you probably lead by example. Now, how to look at this is at the center row, it's normally how people look at you. On the top row, it's where you are fully evolved. You are in your best days. Most of the time, people will see the top. Now, the one at the bottom is your ugly side. Now, have you ever seen people who praise the same guy, for example, this gentleman, you're smiling at me, so I'm gonna use you as an example, okay? Let's say you are a very systematic person and you're very organized, right? Your desk is very clean, you open your wallet, your credit card is from platinum, gold, silver, your notes from biggest to smallest, everything is neat. You can see mistakes immediately. Isn't that good? Now, another person, the, he, may, he may see all this quality, and he, and he may say, this person is an anal because he can see so many mistakes. He's so detailed. I just can't stand it. Now, are we talking about the same person? We are talking about the same person, right? But how come one person sees so different, the perception is so different, another person is so different? It's because we look at things very differently. But you are still who you are. Because when you are a one, if you have one in your personality DNA, you are best suited for best practices. You have a lot of uh, KPI to follow, right? You have a lot of policy. You are very good in detail. So if you are a one, your personal branding is really, you lead by example. So when you write your resume, remember, some of these adjectives should come out. And this, Adjective are suggested words for you to write your own story. Have you ever seen LinkedIn on the very, very beginning when you have the about you session? Yeah. You know what a lot of people say? Straight away, I am a senior digital marketing manager for 16 years in the FMCG company. Now, have you ever seen people open the first para of the resume this way? Let me give you a tip of how HR manager thinks. HR managers today want to know about you because you're not hired for your competency. You're hired for who you are and the attitude you bring to the table, right? So it's important to let people know what kind of values you have and that is your brand. Okay, so all, all the ones, congrats. You are the one that is always right. But let me tell you a caveat. When you're proven wrong, you become very broken. Okay, have you ever seen a happy go smiley perfectionist? Have you ever seen a smiley perfectionist? You never see, right? You know why? They are always angry at you for not meeting his standard, or they are sad with themselves for not meeting the standard. Yeah, you are laughing, right? Definitely somebody come to your mind, right? I hope it's not your boss. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, so. This is my summary. These are your three attributes that design, that define your brand. Of course, there are many. I don't have time to go through all this. 
but you are very reasonable, you are high standard, you are very dedicated. Okay. Anybody has two in your combination? Ah, oh, congrats. You are opposite of one. One is process oriented. Two, people focus. Wow. You just can connect with a lot of people. You have a lot of compassion. You can work with any kind of people. You are very thick skinned. All right, you are very giving. You think of other people more than you. The problem is, you know, everyone has a problem. They have a need to be needed. You know what's the worst thing to tell a helper? I don't need you. You know what's one example of a helper? Mother Teresa. Most of the time, you feel that you suffer in silence. You probably always think for other people more than you. Now, these people are very good for jobs that are like customer service. Marketing, who else? Social worker, charity, because it's always very giving. They focus a lot on people. So if you are two, congratulations. You are very, very suited for the brand of a giver because you always think for others, right? Now, there is also a struggle for helper. Everyone, I'll tell you a struggle. Okay, can I see helper again? Can I see who has a two? Okay, very good. I think I know what your struggle is. You just can't say no to others, right? Yeah, you're the best people to borrow money from. Okay? Okay. All right. So, these are the three things about your brand. You have, you have a natural sense of humor. You're caring. You're warm. You're easily relatable to anyone. That is why in customer service, these people, they get verbal abuse. They get scolded through email. They get shot at over the phone. The next day, they can still come to work as if yesterday didn't happen. They have such a deep issue. All right. So, next one. Number three. Uh, I, I like this guy because I have three. Uh, later, I tell you my number. Okay, who has three? Anyone has three? Okay, you have three? Three. Three is a competitor. Three is someone very charismatic. Three is someone who is a performer. I'm sorry about the green, you may not be able to see, but I promise that you can't agree. I was saying this that. Okay? This is someone that's very easily recognizable. In their office, the walls are full of certificate trophies. Their Facebook are always with good pictures because they have this motivation to enjoy the alumni. They thrive on work like PR, branding marketing, sales, anything that involves competition, anything that involves glory, they are, there. they are very flexible. They are also the most obnoxious in networking because they talk about themselves all the time. Okay, so I'm included because I have three, okay? Now, there's a caveat. They are very defensive when it comes to feedback. They're very defensive, okay? So, they enjoy things that give them a lot of glamour. So, if you have three, these are your branding. You're very optimistic, you're very competent, and you know how to motivate people. By the energy, they can, they can actually light up the room, and when they walk in, they can actually sell you their vision. So, if your personal brand as a marketer is this, then you are in a natural space because you know how to make small things look big, and you definitely know, know how to make big things look very small. All right, number four. Who has four in your, in your, in your three number DNA? Ah, congratulations. You are the most creative people in the room. You are very intense when it comes to emotions. You don't need a lot of friends. You only need people to understand you. You have a need to be different. You don't like to be one among the top. Okay, you like VIP treatment, you are, you always see very deeply. You may look self-absorbed. People may not understand you, right? but it's okay. Like Michael Jackson, you either hate him or you love him, right? These are the people that are so creative. Sometimes when you talk about something, you may not understand him. These are the people sometimes you talk very funny. Now, I'm not saying those are four will talk like this, but I have a friend who is four, and sometimes she will tell me, did you look at the sky today? Did you see the cloud? The formation is so amazing. 
I think God is trying to tell us something. <laughs> and all I have to do is to listen. Okay? But there is also a caveat. People who are very creative, very innovative, they enjoy a lot of me time, right? A lot of me time, huh? Uh, so if you, if you use words like, I enjoy me time, I like to tell my own story, you know what? You know what a lot of people will, will see you as? Emo king and drama queen. Yeah? Very emotional. A little bit of things that happens to them, they are very emotional. But now, I must say, there's no type that is, that is good or bad. Every one of us are different. You need these people to wow you because they are the creator, designer, producer, programmer. You, when you look at their work, you just can't help it but say, wow. And what is your branding? You have a lot of creativity, you have a lot of intuition. So make sure that when you brand yourself, these words will be inside your resume. And you don't have to try very hard because a lot of people will be able to see you. You are such in a deep level. Now, number five. Who is five? Anyone? Anybody five? Oh, five. Hey, congrats. You are the best thinker and most observant in the whole room. Okay? These are the people who are not very emotional. They are very intellectual, in fact. They use their mind a lot. They are very perspective. They, are, they think a lot. They investigate a lot. And they are very good in works that involve observation, research. The engineers, right? the rocket scientists, the market analysts, they are very good because they love working alone. They don't need a lot of interaction with people. In fact, ASAP stands for something different for them. Now, people, tell me, what is ASAP? As soon as possible? Okay, but to this person, it's as slow as possible. You know why? I need time and space, brother. Don't push me. Send me an email. We don't have to meet for lunch, right? And when you are, and then when you meet them in the morning for meetings, if you don't greet them, if you don't come and pat them on the back, it's okay because they need a lot of space. They really need a lot of space. So it's not that you are unfriendly, but you just want your space because you need time to observe the world. They need a lot of data to make decisions. And therefore, in life, they are the worst decision maker because they have to collect a lot of data. All right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's all right. No answer is the right answer to these people, Bell. They're very cynical. Have you ever, have you ever asked someone a question and the answer goes like this? Oh, it depends on what you want. This question can be answered in four levels, five stages. Where should I start? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought it's a very simple question. How come it's so complicated? Because to them, life is never simple. But if this is your brand, then you know what? Knowledge, insights, and wisdom is your brand. Because the world needs the wisdom. Bill Gates is like this. The previous guy, the crayon, number four, Steve Jobs. Okay, so if you're five, you're always cool and collected. When you come to crisis, you're the best person because you are always not so emotional. You're very objective. So good on you. Okay, now, anybody choose number six? Anyone? Six, six. Okay, six. Congratulations. You are the most complicated of all. But in a good way, in a good way. Because you are highly dependable, you are very loyal, you are very engaging, you follow routine. You have no problem following rules. You, you, you like to have a schedule. These are the people that are the worst companion for free and easy travel because they, they feel highly insecure when you say, play by the year, let's see how it goes. Oh, you frighten them. You know what's the worst thing to actually tell them? Don't worry. They worry even more. Why do they say don't worry? There must be something I need to worry, right? Because they are the natural devil's advocate. Devil's advocate. But you need them around in the world. You know what they're good for? They can smell danger a million miles away. 
that's why they are always stressed. They are always worrying. They are always thinking, what if? They have one plan A and three plan B. But that's natural because you, you can foresee what a lot of people cannot see. And this is a gift of life to you. So what is your brand? You are committed, you are faithful. And the reason why you're complicated is this. You need danger in your life to make you strong, to be obey. Have you ever seen a zebra to look for a lion? Have you? But this zebra look for a lion. You know why? Oh, the lion has not appeared. There's no danger. Oh, the lion is there. That means this part is safer. So now do you know why? For these people to have a breakthrough, crisis must happen in your life. So if you want to break through, if you are six, pray for a crisis. Okay. Okay, I'm coming to the end. Who has seven? Seven. Ah, I'm also, I also have seven. 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 Congrats. You are the most fun-loving people that others can find. You are spontaneous, happy-go-lucky, adventurous. When you have a new idea, you want to do it immediately. You are full of energy. You are the live in a moment person, right? You are the, I only live once. Okay. But the problem is this, you have energy, you just don't have focus. That means if today, tomorrow, you don't get it done, you lose interest, you go somewhere else. They love options. They are easily tempted. Technically, the worst people to marry to. Oh, I was kidding about that last part, okay. They are very good. They thrive on short-term projects. So, people who are in insurance, project, entertainment, events, property, they thrive very well. If they have seven in the DNA, they are a natural adventurer. Right? They are hyperactive. The problem is, there is one problem. When you interact with seven, you feel that they are F1 car and you are just a pit stop. Have you ever seen an F1 car? Then 20 people change the four wheel in two seconds and they go off, right? So most of the time they ask you, hey bro, long time no see, how are you? Huh? Well, your head sounds the same. Are you still in the same company? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Are you still married? You see, yeah? they will go through a list of questions just to show that they're interested in you, right? But your answers are not important. They will just go to the next question and the next one and the next one. So while you have energy, you are often misunderstood as someone superficial. But it's okay. It's okay. The magic about this is that you know how to improve yourself. But of course, I don't have the full day to talk about it. I just give it a gist. I hope that my report can do you good. I have two more time and I'm done. So this is your brand. If you are an adventurer, you are a free spirit person, you're spontaneous, you are a risk taker. Sorry about the risk. You make tough work fun. Every workplace needs you because you know how to laugh. You know what's a favorite four letter word? Next. It's okay. Let's go for the next one. Ah, who has number eight? Anybody? Ooh. Now, yours is 358, right? Mm. Yeah, my memory is very good. Huh? 358. Eight. How many eight? Who else? Congrats. You are Donald Trump in disguise. You like to bank table. It is a challenger. It's very strong personality. They are inspiring, very confident. They love to take action. They may be dominating, but their way of, of looking at the world is I must be strong. Now, don't be second. They are not extrovert. They may, they may be introvert. They're very direct. But it, it is not personal. They are just very focused on getting things done because they want to protect whoever that is weak. If you are in an inner circle of a challenger, you will be well taken care of. They treat you as family. Any other people, you'll be an outsider. They will fight. All right. So they are very confrontational and sometimes the word they use will be cut, but they are often misunderstood. So if you find that you do things very different, and even if no one agrees with you, you go and do it alone. It's like either my way or the highway. 
Then my my words to you is this: This is your branding. You are highly independent. You are highly reliant. You are a very reliable person. You have no problem meeting challenges because you are the rainbow in life, and that is your brand. I want to talk about the very last one. Anybody has nine? You know, a lot in this room. Nine is like Dalai Lama and Nelson Mandela of the world. You are a peacemaker. Everybody is my friend. I can listen to every perspective, right? I'm very patient. Now, a peacemaker is such that they are very gifted in life. They, they can be successful in almost everything that they do. Very, very good. No, the thing is this. They are so patient. They listen to you. They take so much time until the rest think that they are wasting time. Right? And you're not taking action. You're oblivious. There is a crisis and you're still discussing. Now, that is how they communicate their brand. Because peacemakers really are very inclusive people. They are highly agreeable. Everybody wants to be on their side. They are non-judgmental. They include everybody. And you know what? What is one gift about them? They are excellent negotiators. Because you can see everybody's perspective from different areas. And that is why I mentioned this guy last. Because the world doesn't need more successful people. The world needs more peacemakers. There are all of us are difficult to work with in one way or the other. Let's be honest. All of us are difficult to work with, seriously, to some people. But all of us are pleasant to work with to certain people. Our job is to make sure that we evolve as a brand. That's a saying. We never change, but we evolve. So people, I want to tell you something. If your first card comes from 234, your first, your, your first number, if it comes from 234, you're more of an emotional person than a thinking person. Okay? If your first card First three number come from five, six, seven. You're more of a rational person than a feeling person. Okay? Now what happens if your first card come from eight nine one? You have no brains, no heart. No, just kidding. Okay? You are a actionable person. You are a gut feel person because between the head, which is the rational and the heart, is the gut. The gut is a hybrid of the head and the heart. The gut feel is very powerful. So if an 891 and this is your first card, good on you because you, this is how your, your center of the world, right? So of course, all these makes up your soul. Have you ever heard the mind, the will, the emotions? It's all about these three, right? So you have to have all these three. You can't function if one of them are, is missing. So guys, one more, one more. Can I just tell you one more secret about this? If you have more of a four, five, and nine, that means you have two or three or three or all these three, your social style is your best withdrawn. You're more withdrawn person. Okay? What about two, six, and one? You're more compliant. That means you're the best child partner. If someone is aggressive, you know how to be passive. You know how to withdraw. You know how to play along, right? If a 378, oh, by the way, I'm 378. Wow. Then you're highly assertive. You make things happen. Okay. Your social style, right? This is your brand. Okay. But my job here today is not to tell you who you are. My job today is to tell you how you can become someone better. Now, one more, one more. Is it okay? If I tell you one more, we are still ahead of time, right? What about conflict? How do you handle conflict in life? If you are, if you have one, three, and five, most of the time, you are a competent person. Do you know why? A three is always flexible. Oh, you mistaken what I meant just now. Oh, is it flexible? What about five? Let's discuss who is right and who is wrong and what happened, right? How about one? You know why he's so good in dealing with conflict? Do you know why a perfectionist is so good? Because he's never wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> yeah, you are wrong. He's right. That's all. Settle the case. All right. But what about 279? Can I ask anyone has this three number together? Anyone? 
Okay. If you ever play this game, and I'm going to send you a link how to play this game with other your friends. If you ever have three seven two seven nine seven two nine seven nine two whatever combination, all right, he is a positive person. How can this person ever be negative? A two helps you to understand. A seven don't think much about the pain. A nine listen to you. You have all these together as a person. Wow, this is such a positive person. All right, if you ever. If this person ever have an issue with anyone, the issue is on the other person, not this person. All right, this person will never find fault. What about four, six, and eight? Uh, I don't have very good news. You are a reactive person. A four will always ask, "Why me? Why always me?" A six, oh, finish already. This time, sure finish, and the roll is coming, huh? I know something, something worse is coming. And eight, how dare you do this to me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> okay, now guys, just how to you about three number, right? Your first number, it doesn't take a genius for people to recognize that that is you. It's the skin of your soul. Okay? Second number is the muscle of your soul. It's not drive. The outer layer of personality. So, I'm three. I am a three for first. Okay, I'll use my myself as number. I am a naturally competitive person. I know when to be seen. I know when to disappear. That's me. I'm very flexible. That's why I'm dangerous. Okay. But my second number is seven. I do this with the energy of a adventure, of someone fun, of someone that that can see the big picture. But my last number is the one that shows the potential. Because that last number is always being activated when you are pushed against the wall, when you are forced to make a decision, when you are forced to make a change. That will be emerging. So guys, I, want, I have 168 reports of all this number and I hope that if you allow me to if you send your three numbers to me, I will help you to decode. I will send you a report, okay? But if you find that after explaining, after my explanation, if you feel that, Andrew, I think I made a mistake just now, uh, it should be the other one. Okay, it's, it's really okay. Scan this code, key in the right number, and I will send you a report. I also have a simple card game, all right? That is not launched, but it's something that you can play. I will make this online very soon. You can play with anybody, right? You can play with your spouse. And hopefully you marry the right person. I just kidding. Okay. Okay. Now, now guys, sometimes after you do a test with your close friends or your spouse, you'll find that, hey, we're actually very different. We're opposites. Like one and seven, opposite. Two and eight, opposite. Now, why so opposite? Let me tell you something. If you find that your best friends and you are opposites, your spouse and you opposites, your boss and you opposites, congratulations. That is the best working combination. Because the way to long-term working relationship is to have someone different but with the same value. Okay? You need to watch each other's back. And that is why when you evolve as a brand, if you are a spontaneous person, you need to have system and structure. When you think too much of yourself, like an eight, you need someone who is a helper to balance you up. And that is how the world works. And that's how personal branding is. You know what you need to become in order to be a better brand. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this whole conference and I hope that you have some good takeaway. Of course, you don't have to agree with me for everything. But I'll be happy to talk to you over a glass of wine. And hopefully, we'll be all be sober enough to discuss personality. All right. So thank you very much for listening.